Another very, very good reason why you should be practicing roll in and roll out and accompanied by your lip buzzing. Lip buzzing not only builds up strength and flexibility and responsivity, depending on what you're doing, but it is also a practice in real time roll in and roll out. And I'm going to demonstrate that right now. So if you're having problems going up and going back down on the horn, although lip buzzing is not exactly what we're doing into the mouthpiece, so don't don't think that you, we're not lip buzzing does not does not equal exactly what we're doing when we're playing the horn, but it's an approximation. And so if you can get the roll in and roll out with your lip buzzing, you're just going to find it much easier on the horn. So why don't you watch the real time roll in and roll out? on my lips without the horn. I've already demonstrated in another video on the horn. So I'm gonna play a tester note of low C. I'll do a couple of these so you can kind of get it. Concert B flat low C. I'll buzz it. Now I'm gonna roll out. You see the slight roll out and roll in as I'm going back and forth from low C to pedal C. Uh, what if we take that up an octave? Middle C. Let me get a better breath. Right on there, there. So there I was rolling out and rolling back in two octaves on my lips. And um, I'm not going to set in try, and try to set any record here on how many octaves I can do. But you're seeing the real time roll out and roll in. And if you're having trouble doing that on the horn, uh, you might consider doing a little bit of lip buzzing. Now, if you haven't done a lot of lip buzzing before, or you have and you haven't had good success, you really need to go to my YouTube YouTube channel and search lip buzzing or just put in lip buzzing Kurt Thompson because I have a plethora of lip buzzing tutorials. Um, most of them cautioning you to not do too much lip buzzing, keep it as soft as you can to get the tone out and taking lots and lots of breaks because you do just a little bit more lip buzzing than you really need and it can actually backfire on you and screw you up and so you don't need to get gun ho on lip buzz and do a half an hour of this a day and find that a couple days later you can't even play the horn because that's what will happen to you so uh, let's what if we went a little higher that last one was middle c that should be a high c with a little chip in there Take a breath, see if I can get that back up. All right. Hopefully, you were able to see my lips rolling in and rolling out. That's what we mean by roll in and roll out. Um, for those of you who still find it ambiguous or murky or foggy or unclear, or theoretical, it's not theory. We're talking about something that's really going on in the horn when you're playing this guy. So if you've been having trouble with the roll in and roll out, which is really essential for you to be able to maneuver all around the horn, whether you're going higher or whether you're going down lower, it's really essential that you have that down. If you don't have that down, what ends up happening is, well, it's the result of why most people sound the way they do. They sound choppy. And brittle and stiff and they don't have that really fluid flowing cantabile singable sound and instead they're chopping what they're the reason that is is because they have to reset their embouchure 
uh, as they go high and have to reset their armatures, they go lower. So the roll in and roll out in real time uh, allows you to maneuver through the various ranges of the horn without having to stop and start with the tongue, stop and start with the air, or constantly reset your armature and armature positioning to be able to accommodate the different ranges you're playing in. That's the whole reason for it. And so it's not just a um, talent or a skill set. It's a combination of just about everything. Strength, flexibility, skill set, and some talent. Um, where I made mention in the um, four octave glissando tutorials I did that that's pretty much a result of brute strength and power, not a lot of talent. The roll in and roll out does require a skill set. It's not about brute strength. It does require some talent, some skill set. Um, you need to have practice on that. And of course, it does take a little bit of strength and flexibility. So one more time, Let's see what we can get here. Yeah. So the high C, and I'm just gonna keep it high C and under for that way that's, just for everybody, okay? That should be a middle C. That was, um, I'm actually kind of firing all cylinders this morning because that actually came out pretty decent. That was real time rolling from high C down to low C. And all the way back that last couple that I did so um, it might look easy to you on the video here but when you start trying that lip buzzing you're gonna go oh my god <laughs> it's tough so lip buzzing in general is tough it's actually the hardest thing that we can do in regards to our horn as far as embouchure and as far as playing so is lip buzzing the hardest mouthpiece buzzing is about moderate and then of course playing the horn is the easiest so that's how it goes so uh, anyway I'm Kurt Thompson and if you want some amateur coaching for all brass instruments, what I just did is applicable to all brass instrument, brass instruments, not just trumpet. Um, if you got a pair of these, you know, playing to something that's metal like this, um, a lot of what I do applies to you, regardless of what brass instrument that you play. So hopefully you found this video about rolling and roll out and lip buzzing, and another reason why lip buzzing can be quite valuable in your uh, practicing uh, regimen. Until next time, keep the faith, buddy.